Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna be talking about sharing screens in Zoom. So we're gonna go over how to share something that is on your screen and how to use the built-in whiteboard feature in Zoom as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you'll notice is once you launch your Zoom session, um, and you'll see I'm here as the teacher and I've got three students that are joining me today and they all have their webcams off. Um, the first thing you'll notice is down here in the toolbar, there is a green screen share button. This is on in my Zoom settings, so I have it available here. Um, so if I wanna share something on my screen to my students, so I don't want them to see my just my webcam, but I want them to see something that I'm trying to teach, I can click this little button. And when you do so, you will get this interface. So let's talk about this, because there's, there's quite a bit here. Um, the instructions up here say to select a window or an application that you want to share. And then I have two versions. I have basic and advanced. We're going to start with basic first. It will then show me all of the different things that I can share with my students. And this is basically a menu of all the things that are open on my computer right now. So one thing I could choose to do is just share my whole screen with them. And you'll notice it has um, my little Zoom box here, but you can also see my computer background behind it. And so this would just be a share of anything that's on my screen they will see, including um, computer backgrounds and menus and things like that. One of the other options I have is to share a whiteboard with them. We'll come back to this in a minute. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can also do things like take your iPad and cast that to your computer and then share it. I don't have one here, so I've not been able to test this out. But if you have one, you might want to experiment with that. It could be cool for you. Then the other things that I have over here are share either one of these Chrome things that I have running. So over here I have Chrome Web Browser running, and then I'm also recording Screencastify, so it's even giving me that as a separate instance of Chrome. I also have my Zoom Cloud Meeting software running, so I could share with them this window. I have a little video pulled up in here that's saved on my desktop, so I could share that with them. And then I also have a Word document on my computer, so I could share that with them. So what can you share? Web browsers, of course, your whole screen, or any other application or program you have running on your computer. Now, one important thing to note is this. A lot of teachers have asked, hey, I want to share a video with students. I want to play the video on my end, and then I want students to be able to watch it. If you'd like to do that, there are a couple of key things you need to note. First of all, down here at the bottom, there's this place that says share computer sound. It is off by default. If you want to share with your students, not just your microphone sound, but any sound that's playing on your computer, a video sound, a website sound, uh, maybe a music file, you got to turn that on. The other thing that you have over here is this optimized screen sharing for video clip. If you're going to share a video clip with students, you definitely want to have this on as well. Now, let's talk about best practices really quick. We do not recommend sharing with vi sharing videos with students as part of your direct instruction time. We think that's a better um, asynchronous activity where you could post a link to a video in Google Classroom and ask students to watch that before they come to your class today. That way you're not using designated class time for your students to watch a video that they could have watched on their own. This also allows students to watch the video when they have time to do it and allows them to pause and rewind if they miss something. If they watch it live with you in class, they don't have any control over how they're going to watch the video or whether they need to pause and rewind something. So it's best to put that in the asynchronous part of our instruction and use this time instead for things that we want to do as a synchronous activity. But if you have a video that absolutely has to be part of your synchronous activity, you can do it. You just need to click these two buttons. So let's demonstrate a couple of things. The first thing I want to share with you is sharing not my whole screen, but instead sharing just my web browser. So I have a couple of things that are loaded in my web browser that I wanna share with students. And you'll notice my web browser right here, it's open to my Google Classroom page. So that's what I can see here is whatever is currently open. When I click this and I click share, what students will see on their end now is whatever I am looking at in my web browser. And you'll notice I've got this little lime green box that goes around my web browser. Even if I move my web browser around, that lime green box follows it to indicate that students can't see anything except for what's inside that box right now. So right now on all of my students' screens, they can see our Google uh, Classroom page. So if I needed to show students, hey, your classwork is over here, I want you to go in, pick this assignment, or once you open it up, I want you to notice this link is over here, I can demo things for my students this way. Another thing I can do is, let's say I'm gonna do some direct instruction, and I've built out some things in a, um, a Google Slides file ahead of time. I have over here our newsletter that we built last year. But let's say you've got some notes over here or you've got an activity that you want your students to see. 
What you can do is open this up in a web browser. You can click your present button like normal if you were in your classroom. And now what students see on their screen is just this slide deck. And so you can guide your students through all of these things and they can either take notes um, or they can interact with your, um, with your lesson this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this right now. And I wanna show you a couple of other things you can share with students. I have over here a Discovery Ed video that's up and a Discovery Ed um, assignment. So you could have this posted in your Google Classroom already, and then you could launch it by taking your students over here and you can show your students some of the things that are happening um, on this website or even live play this video for your students. I also have other great educational websites like Desmos over here. I can go ahead and do a demo of me graphing an equation for students and they can be watching it just like I would on screen in the classroom. Or maybe even something like I pull up an article in Newzella and uh, assign that to students. And so we're going to go over it together or maybe they've read it ahead of time. And now I want to go through and I want to point out some of the key content in there or I want to point out some of my annotations. So anything that I get up on my screen that I want students to see, I can share that with them. Now, what you'll notice is when I'm in this screen sharing mode, all of my tools are gone. I don't have my regular Zoom tools. Those all go and they start hiding up here at the top of your screen. So if you wanna get those back, you just move up here to where all of them are at the top of the screen. And then you'll notice this is a little bit of a problem because these tools are now kind of hiding part of my web browser. So it becomes this careful dance of like, how do you get to different tabs? Well, one thing you can do is navigate up here and get it to pull down. And if you click and drag, you can move this toolbar wherever you'd like it to be on the screen. So if it fits a little bit better over here, you can move it to the side so that it's not in your way while you're trying to um, do this to students. Just know that wherever this toolbar is, students will see that on their screen as well. So you wanna move it so it's not covering up any of the key content. So you notice you have all the same normal controls that you would normally have, they're just up here. All right, when you are done sharing your screen with students, what you can then do is you can click this stop share button. And as soon as I tap that, it takes me back to this view where now it's just the regular grid view and we all see each other's webcams and I can continue my instruction. Let me show you one other thing that you can share in here. I'm gonna cl click this button again. We talked about how you can share your web browser. It's the same thing if you wanna share a video file that's on your computer or you wanna share some other um, app that's running on your computer. But one of the other things you can do is you can share a whiteboard that's built into Zoom with your students. So if you wanna share this whiteboard, you're just gonna click this button, tap share, and you'll notice you get this same share menu that you had before. Here are all those controls that we were just talking about a minute ago, I'm gonna move those back up to the top. And now I have a whiteboard and what's on every student's screen is this whiteboard. So over here, I have a whole bunch of different tools. I've got a text tool where I can type in here and that'll appear for them. I can draw using any one of these things. So let's go ahead and pick this squiggly line and I can write right on here. Let's say I'm gonna do some math and I'm gonna go ahead and write in three X. That now appears on all the students' screens. I can also grab any one of these tools and create different shapes on there. They've got stamp tools. They've got a spotlight tool if you want to, uh, to instead not draw, but you just want to basically highlight different things, you can do that. There's an eraser in here so that you can remove things. You can change the line width and the font and the color and all sorts of things like that. So this becomes a pretty powerful tool since I don't need a separate whiteboarding app. It's just integrated here in Zoom. And whatever I demo over here for students, they will see on their screens as well. So I can go ahead and work out some equations here and I can try to solve this with my students in the class and we can see if we come up with different solutions for this. So I can use this as a great tool um, to show my students anything I want. When I'm done with this, I can either just stop my sharing and exit out of here, or if I wanna take this whiteboard, all of my notes, all the things that we did, if I wanna save this, I can click the save button over here and it will then save this for me um, and take basically a screenshot of this whiteboard. So when I click this thing, it saves it in a folder. And if I were to click this button, I would be able to see that there is a Zoom folder saved on my computer and all of my little screenshots of the whiteboard are in there. We'll go over that in the, uh, the recording session if you wanna see those pieces, uh, take a look at that video. So I'm gonna stop sharing one more time and let's go over some of the key things that we figured out in this. If you click screen, share screen, you can share any one of the things that you have up a web browser or another app. You can share your whiteboard. You could share the whole screen with them if you just want them to see everything that's on your computer right now. Maybe you need to toggle back and forth between a couple of apps, that's all good. 
One of the other options that you have is this advanced tab over here. So if you're looking to do things like you've got a physical document camera that you want to be able to incorporate and you want to share that document camera to your students, you click advanced. And if you've got that second camera hooked up to your computer, you could toggle back over to that. So um, some of you may want to make use of this. Some of you may want to share just music or computer sound with no image. You can do that. Um, or you might want to designate just a portion of your screen that you're going to share where you basically outline a portion of your screen. You pick your own green box and that's the only thing that gets shared with students. So lots of options with screen sharing. This allows us to really elevate some of the great distance learning and some of the synchronous learning that we do. Um, using this, you can do almost all the things that you would in a physical classroom in terms of displaying things up on your projector. You can share the same things here with students. You can um, even use this whiteboard feature as well so that um, you can demonstrate things for your students right in here. All right, I'm gonna close this and I wanna now point out the last piece for you. Down here next to screen share, if you take a look at this carrot right next to it and click that, this is where you can get into some of your screen share options. So right now by default, it's one participant can share at a time, meaning I'm the only one that can share. I could also let multiple participants share simultaneously. So I could say, hey students, I want you to all um, do something on maybe like um, Google's whiteboarding app, Jamboard. I want you guys to work out the math problem and then I want everybody to share their screens at the same time so that we can see everybody's work, you can do that. You also have advanced sharing options down here and this allows you to pick who can share. Right now, um, only the host can share. If you want participants to share, you can toggle that on. You can then say multiple participants or you can say one participant, all participants can share. Who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? only the host, or you can let participants interrupt each other. So you've got all of these different options and you can customize the different settings to make sure that sharing options are working the best possible way for you. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Go ahead and try share screen with your students next time you're doing a Zoom and let's see what kind of awesome things you can do together online.